it's Kay. Welcome to our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. Today is a very special day, which is why I'm coming on to tell you about it. We're doing a special collab tonight with Tamara at Love My Babies Forever. She is an amazing crafter and you're going to want to go and check out her channel. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below so that you can do that. And just in case we're still having problems with those links, we'll leave it in the comment section as well. So without further ado, we're going to move on to the video and we're going to be working on planners today. So we're starting a brand new project. Is from Hobby Lobby and it does go on sale every other week. It's $4.99 regular. It's from the Ribbon Boutique. It's faux leather wide ribbon. It's back where they have the sewing items, okay? It's not in regular ribbon. So this color is called silver and pink. It's very glittery and shiny. For my planner, this is what I'm going to use on the outside. I have used the light pink leather on my personal planner before. This is very similar to the one we're going to be making on camera. This has a little tassel charm with a little key here on the end. That's called a spine charm. And then we have a charm also here on the front that looks like a closure. It just dresses up our elastic there. And so this is similar to what we're going to do. So let's open up our faux glitter leather and roll it out. And as you can see, it's this ugly gray color on the inside, but we're going to cover that. And now we need to cut it to size. This roll is 24 inches long, and so we're going to cut it in half, and that will give us two pieces, and we can do two planners, because we only need 12 inches the way I make the planner. So I'm just going to fold that in half, and draw a line, and then I'll cut that out. So I'm using my carpenter square that I got at the Dollar Tree and a neat pen, and I'm just going to draw a line. Then I'll use my fabric scissors to cut it out. Okay, for this project, we just need this one. The next thing I'm going to do is use my corner rounder. I'm going to use the half inch side and I'm going to round all four corners for a planner. My corner rounder does have a difficult job going through the vinyl and the glitter, but that's okay. We'll come back with some scissors and we'll just clean up those edges. And I hope you can tell they are rounded, not quite as perfectly as the regular leather. So we can trim them up a little bit more with our scissors. I still think that looks really pretty and it makes a beautiful planner. The next thing I'm going to do for this project, I don't like the way this looks. I actually don't like the way any of the leathers look on the inside, is we're going to line this piece of leather. I picked up this fabric from Walmart. It has butterflies and roses, some pinks. I think it's quite beautiful. And I'm going to cut out a piece for us to glue on to this piece. And we're going to use our Fabri-Tac glue. Fabri-Tac is great when you're making mini albums. It's great when you're making planners and using this kind of fabric. Any fabric that you use, this will bond lace, glass, leather, wood trims. This is what you need to use, Fabri-Tac. Now I have it laid out on my fabric and I'm going to go in with my fabric scissors and I'm going to cut a little bit larger than what this is. I went ahead and cut two because of course we're making two planners. It's easier to make two at a time and that way I don't put up my materials and lose them. So the next thing I'm going to do is go and iron this piece of fabric and I'll be right back. Now that I have ironed my fabric and it's nice and straight, I noticed that this fabric is directional so we want to make sure when we put our 
planer together that we turn it this way. I'm going to get out my Fabri-Tac and put it on the entire surface and then I'm going to smooth it down. Then I will put a couple of heavy books on it and let it dry for several hours. I'm going to take one of these wood popsicle sticks and spread my glue out a little. Then I'm going to apply some more. And now we'll just place this down carefully. And now I'm going to take our cover and put some heavy books on it. So to make our pocket folder, I'm going to use this collection, Petticoats and Pinstripes by Echo Park. You saw me use it in a project just recently, and it's very cheery and happy, and I think it will definitely blend with the fabric that we're using on the inside of our cover. So I have picked out a sheet. I'm going to pick this sheet with the dress mannequins. It's very cheery and it doesn't matter if it goes upside down or not. It's non-directional and so is the back here. So the first thing I'm going to cut is our width of our folder and we're going to cut that at 10 inches. So you just make sure it's lined up correctly. We can save this for a bookmark or some trim. And so we cut that at 10 inches. So now we're going to turn it and we're going to cut the height for our book. We're going to cut the height at 10 and 3 quarters. So I'm moving it over to the 10 and 3 quarters line here. And I think I'll just take it off the bottom here so I don't have to worry about cutting that strip. And we'll save that for later. And that's going to give us the height for our pocket folder. Now we need to score this. Because our width is 10 inches, we're going to score it right down the middle at five. And if you don't have a scoreboard, you can always fold this. We don't want to push so hard that we tear our paper. So, here we go. I'll fold it over, making sure that we lined it up perfectly. And we'll burnish that down. And now we need to turn it and score it for the pocket. So we're going to place it in our scoreboard once again, turning it in the opposite direction. So here's our first scoring. Now we're going to turn it the opposite way and we're going to score it at three and a half. I like to start lightly and you can always come back. It's better than ripping it. And so we'll fold that up. Burnish it again. So it's nice and crisp. And then we're going to open it back up. And now you can see here's our shorter part. That's going to be our pocket. And I'm going to take my scissors and start at the fold line and just cut a small V. Maybe and half to three quarters of an inch across from the bottom there is how far we're going in. It doesn't really matter. I don't really measure it, I just cut. So we take out that V, and when we open it back up, this is how we fold our folder in. But we're gonna make a couple more snips on it. I'm going to go back in with my Cropidol Corner Chomper from We Are Memory Keepers, turn it on the half inch side, and I'm going to round all four corners from the outside. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then we'll close it up and get these two corners as well. And then it will fit in the elastics so much easier. There's one. 
and you can tell this thing cuts through a lot. We cut the corners with our faux leather and now we're cutting this. And now we just have one more thing to do to our pocket folder. We could laminate it. You could put it in your laminator, but you would want to laminate it closed and run it through this way. You absolutely can do that and just cut a little edge as you go around. But what I'm going to do is leave it this way because I like to have mine unlaminated in my planner. I'm going to use art glitter glue and I'm going to put it just here on the edges. You don't need very much art glitter glue. It's a wonderful medium. I've told you that before and it works quite well. So let's put the glue on. And I'm going to let that sit just a second and it will be totally ready to go. And we can put all of our things that we want to keep in the pockets. And now that our cover is dry, I'm going to trim around the edge of the fabric. I think I'll take that off camera and finish that up so I can make sure I get it nice and straight. So here's our cover. And here's our inside cover, have everything trimmed up. The next thing we want to do is make some holes in our planner cover at the top and the bottom and the middle so that we can string the elastic in. What I did was take a piece of cardstock and I made sure that it was 12 inches long. I just pieced a piece together and then I folded it in half to get my center and I drew a line. I drew another line one eighth of an inch from the bottom. And then I punched my holes. I know that I want four holes, which will give me six pieces of elastic in this planner. So I'm going to punch four holes at the bottom and the top. I go ahead and punch them in cardstock first so that I can mark them on my planner and then easily punch them out. Because you can't draw a line on the fabric or it, you know, it will mess it up. So I always make a pattern first. And so I just came in an eighth of an inch over from the center. You can get closer than this. It's not overly necessary. But the reason I did is I know I'm going to have two pieces of elastic going vertically in this hole and two in this one vertically. And you'll see that in a moment when we string it. So then I always bring mine over and line it up as best I can from side to side and the bottom. And then I'm just going to take a pen or a marker and mark my holes at the top and at the bottom, and then we'll cut those out. And sometimes you'll have to get a different color marker to make sure you can see it because this is a busy pattern. And you're not gonna be able to see that on camera no matter what I do, but I can see my four dots right there. And then I'm gonna turn it around and do it on the other side. Line it up from side to side. And from the bottom, going in to make sure you get that 1 8 inch here. And then I'm just going to fill in my holes. Some of them will be easier to see than others. The next thing I'm going to do is take my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch and I'm going to punch the holes in my planner. It is an amazing tool. It can do a lot of things. It cuts two different size holes. I'm going to be using, of course, the 1 8 inch side. It also has a 3 16 inch side. Just a really great tool. It also will set brads um, and a lot of other things. This is a great tool. It's, it will punch 10, guys. This is an amazing tool to have in your collection of crafting tools. So I'm going to turn it, of course, for the 1 8 inch side and it has a hole right here on top and you can look and see where you're punching your holes. And I'm going to go in and punch. And I wish I could show you how perfect that is, but I'm sure on camera it's hard to tell. Now let's punch the rest. Let me turn it on the front. It's still going to be impossible for you to see it, but it has four little perfect holes there. Now we'll punch the second side.
and there's the four holes on this side. Now I need to punch a hole right through the middle. Because my book is eight inches tall, then halfway would be four inches. So I mark that here on my sample board and I put a hole right in the middle. So I can line it up once again at the bottom. And from side to side, and then I can place a dot right here in the middle. I'm using my jot marker, and that's where I'll put my hole for the middle part. For the middle hole, I'm going to be using this crocodile too. This is the big daddy of all of the crocodiles. This one is wonderful. It has this arm that measures. You could even set this at four inches, and you know exactly where you're going in. It will do two different size holes. You just set it here on the top and we're gonna set ours at 1 8 inch. And if you look on the side, when I push down, you can tell where the 1 8 inch is going down. It's going down right in here. So I'm going to carefully line that up, put it into my crocodile here. and then we'll just punch it down. And that has a perfect hole. Now, if you want to, at this point, you can put grommets in your book. You can put grommets in each of these holes for the bottom, the one in the middle, and the four down here. I'm not putting grommets in mine this time, but uh, grommets is a wonderful thing to do if you would like to. But with my glitter, my holes aren't even going to show, so I don't really feel like I need to dress them up. So now we need to go in and string our book. I do want to tell you one thing. My glue isn't completely dry yet. This really needs to set overnight and set up really well, and then the book will stiffen. So tonight I'm going to finish letting this dry, but I want to go ahead and show you how to string this book. I'm going to use this two millimeter elastic to string my book and to string my middle closure as well. Mine is by Mandela Crafts, Mandela Crafts. I ordered it on Amazon and I have made tons of books already, planners, journals, you name it. And I have not used all of my elastic. So it lasts a really long time when you get it. That's why I mostly work in pinks, although I do have this in white as well for any other color that I work in. But it's two millimeters wide. You really need that size. So to string our book, we know because we have four holes, we know we're going to have six elastics. So what I usually do is I hold it a little past the middle and I run it around six times. That's three, four, five. And you don't want to pull it too tight, but you do want it a little snug. And that's six. And then we'll come back to the middle here. All right, and we'll cut that off. So now that we have our elastic cut, I'm just going to snip off the end at an angle. You could also burn it with a lighter. It helps a little bit. And I'm going to go in first to the third hole at the top. There's one, two, three, four. Count from left to right, just like we read from left to right. And I'm going to go in this third hole and then pull it all the way through until we're just past our center hole, which is right there on the butterfly. And so I'll leave some room to tie it. And then I'm going to come in to my second hole from the back here. So now that we've come up into the second hole, we're going to go straight down into the second hole at the bottom. All of the elastics go straight down below where they came in on the inside and on the outside they always go across and we will fill in all the gaps. So we're going to go and come in the first hole of our book there on the bottom pulling it across. I got that one a little tight because I wasn't paying attention. And now we're going to go straight up into the first hole. 
it really helps when you let this dry overnight. It gets a lot stiffer. And you do want to, by the way, guys, coat your glue. You want to put more glue than you saw me put on camera. You want to put a lot of glue because that will stiffen it. And now I'm going to go back over and fill in that gap in that hole. And I'm in that second hole at the top. I'm pulling it back through. And yes, that does mean there are two elastics here. The middle holes always end up with two elastics. So these two in the middle will end up with two and the outside holes with just one. That's why I spaced them the way I did. I'm going to go ahead and cut that at an angle again. That's why I leave a little extra. So I'm going to come down here in this hole I've already been into because I'm coming straight down. Remember, we don't go at a diagonal at all. If you just pull it aside, you can usually get it right in. And so now we have room for three books so far. That one's a little tight. We'll give it some slack. There we go. All right. And so in the back, we're going to go across into the third hole there at the bottom. And it does take time to lace a book. And when you're telling someone else how to do it, it takes even more time, doesn't it? And so we're going to go up here in this third hole again. little too snug. There we go. And you'll know if you get it too snug because your book will start to bow. There we go. And of course we're going to go across and flick that pattern at the top. Going in that fourth hole at the top. Go straight down at the bottom. an angle again and I'm going to go back into this hole next to it which is the third hole down here at the bottom which is the last hole we have to go into on lacing our book there we go. and it'll straighten out a lot when I get my books in it it's just being mean to me today and then when you get back to this hole and come straight up, you'll see the string you started with, the end you started with, and you're going to tie them together. And I'm not going to tie them really tight till I adjust my strings. But I'm going to put a couple of knots, and then I'll make some adjustments. And now we need to put in this string here in the middle. And that will serve as our closure and wrap around much like my personal journal that I showed you earlier. It goes around like so. So I'm just going to hold it against my book and cut it. I want to leave enough room for all of my books to go inside. And then we're going to take the two ends together. You can go ahead and tie a knot if you want to, but you'll probably have to adjust it honestly. Um, then where the folded end is like the looped end there, the center, we're going to take it and push it down through the hole. Just like that. And that will be our closure. And of course it's going to have to be adjusted, but I'm going to put my books in here first and then I'll come back and show you what we have so far and on our next video we'll spend some time together and do a few decorative things. We'll decorate our notebooks and do some special things to this to make it cuter and just more fun to use actually. So hold on just a second. And there we have it. I've put some notebooks in and a planner and 
just some items of my folder and so forth. And we'll go over the rest of the inside next week. But I did want you to see it kind of completed there. And I have my little compliment card on the front. That can be used to decorate our book, but also, of course, a page marker. But we'll do some other markers in there as well. So I hope you've enjoyed making a planner cover together. And we'll continue this next week. And I've enjoyed spending some time with you guys. Bye. Have a great week. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. Bye y'all!